My name is Kumba Pakima, and I was born and raised in London. There's always been gang violence here, but I've never seen it worse than it is now. It's a brutal street war that's destroying lives every week. So who are these gang members and why do they choose this life? And if they do, can they ever go back? I want to find out from the people directly involved. So I'm on my way to meet a gang in Brixton. They call themselves 410 and are pretty well known around here. One of them was arrested for a shooting just days before we were due to meet. After several attempts of trying to meet them, they finally reached out to me and sent me a location 10 minutes out of the town centre. They told me one of their most active members will be there to meet me. Just my mum, so she was like my role model. She was there for me the hard times, surrounded from young, and it. So it was just normal. I would just see it every day as if it was a normal lifestyle. So as I got older, like, just I was stupid. <laughs> I kind of wanted to be a part of it because it was the only life that was shown to me, that was glamorised to me, and it. So how deep would you say you are in this gang life? For the end. <laughs> Fully, 100. 100, 100%. Have you ever seen someone be stabbed before? Yeah. And so what exactly is this that you're wearing right now? Oh, uh, my stabby vest, isn't it? I can see that you have, like, a few marks and stuff here. Yeah. So has that been, like, times when people have attempted to try and kill you? Yeah. To see that people actually... Because when you actually look at it, like, more time, it's actually deep, in it? Like, yeah, it's shocking, cos it's, like, You have to put everywhere. effort to get yeah. it in, like... It shocks me that people are actually trying that hard to, like, get yeah, man so down. Why like. have they... Why are people trying that hard to kill you? Um, things such as gang affiliation or things in the past that you had to do when you're out with the guys. Like, when you're out in, in a gang, certain times you're gonna have to do certain things to other people. You get a little fame on your name, a little respect on your name, innit? Certain people don't wanna like, talk to you a certain way, certain people want to talk to you a certain way, you get me? Because they're scared of who you roll with or who you become now they're affiliated. And you get other stuff like, obviously, it's easy way to make money. There's ways to make money when you're involved. Easy ways to make a good amount of money, a lot amount of money. How exactly do you make your money? Yeah, I will show you that. That's um, Oh, this is, um, crack. You can get hurt, you can get life in prison, you are hurting your family too. It's clear that JC thinks there's no way out for him, but at least he's still alive. There's been many casualties already this year, an average of three killings a week, and they didn't go unnoticed. We're watching Sky News at five o'clock, the headlines this evening. The mother of a teenage boy shot dead in London makes an emotional appeal for an end to violence in the capital. I want these children to stop this, stop. The victim was an up-and-coming rapper. Police are investigating whether he was caught in a gangland feud. Raheem Barton was 17 when he was shot dead by a rival gang in South London. On the day he was murdered, he was coaching football with family friend Sace Holmes Lewis. Just hours after he was dropped off, Sace received a call. Sace, have you heard what's happened? I said, what? What's happened? He said, Raheem. He said, what about Raheem? So he's been shot. And I was like, mm, come on, what do you mean he's been shot? And he was like, he's been shot. He's dead. I was like, come, how? He was just with us. Yeah. To be honest, there are no words that I can kind of explain. It was just... I just felt like I lost my own son. Raheem starred in dozens of music videos with hundreds of thousands of views, making him a target for other gangs. The music essentially was a way for Raheem to express himself in a way that he couldn't, you know, on a daily basis in society. And he'd been rejected by pretty much every institution that he went to, you know, from the age of eight. 
He was a, a, good, a good kid. I had his trust from a young age and I think he was just looking for that kind of role model and kind of father figure to, to trust in and confide in and have that support. London is different in so many ways to the rest of the country. Sky News has done analysis of murder crimes throughout the UK. Everywhere apart from London, the racial profile of murder victims and murder suspects is a simple reflection of the racial mix in those areas. But not in London. Here, gang violence has left its mark. In the last 18 months, almost half of murder victims and murder suspects in the capital are young black men way out of proportion of London's population. So can it really be the case that for a large number of young black men living in London, it's kill or be killed? Memorials like this one can be found all over London, mostly for young men who've been killed on the street. And police never seem to be too far away. While filming in Brixton, we came across this. Police call it a show of force. They tell us there's been a gang-related incident. I find out it's a drive-by shooting. No one was killed this time, but I want to find out what it must be like for the people living here. Two guys came from off of the estate and um, my neighbours a couple of doors down they got off their outside their, their door I'm still shaking up remembering it they actually got off two guys one with a shotgun and one with a, a pistol and basically stood outside their front door and fired and I'm a couple of doors down and it freaked the sh out of me they are used at the end of the day going to school with weapons to protect themselves or whatever at the end of the day. I've been told my kids grew up in this sort of environment as much as I try to keep them out of it. But this for them and, you know, the age groups, younger and younger. And it's, it's, it's frightening. You don't want, at the end of the day, the um, personal experiences, all the, the people that are getting stabbed and everything else. When it's personal, because then it's like it comes closer to home. And for them, it's part and parcel of you growing up now. And for me, it's horrendous the fact of you can't actually sit outside in your front garden or walk up and down or go on a bus and everything else. For me, it's a different world. Sharon isn't the only one here frustrated. Now, I think this is going because of how the, the younger youths them growing up, killing each other with knife and all of these things, yeah? Now, the reason for it, many people do know why, but they deny like they don't. The reason for it is a system. They, it's their pleasure to run away a baby father or a husband from the house. When they do that, the kids grow up like a fox. No road model. Doesn't matter if you're black or you're white. It's beyond black and white now. After several shootings and stabbings, I didn't hear from the gangs for a while. But after a few weeks, I finally got in touch with someone. He's a young guy belonging to one of the most feared gangs in London, and he agreed to meet me in his area. I'm on my way to meet the Woolwich boys. believed to control much of the drug supply in South East London. Their reputation is fierce. Much of the violence around here is linked to them. I'm told to pick up a senior member of the gang who's just got out of jail, and he said he would introduce me to his friends. This is Woolwich, and obviously this is where we all thought of, most of us are from here. This is where we all chewed, hang around, did our daily day bases and that. So obviously, this is just a hood in it. Tell us about your gang. Are they powerful here? Yeah, we're powerful around there. Loads of people know who we are. They know our faces and they know what we're about at the end of the day. 
So obviously we do our thing and obviously we're at it to make a living. My face is pretty good well known, isn't it? Anywhere I go, I walk around, people see my face, everyone knows who I am. They see me, they know my name, they're like, yo, well gone, bro. Like, it's a quite a known face around there. And how does that make you feel going on the street knowing that a lot of people know who you are? It's, I like it. I like it. What will happen if you saw someone, like one of your ops, right now? Oh, see, like, how would you jump out, gang? Like, simple as, like, <laughs> that's the end of the situation, isn't it? Those are my ops for a reason. They've obviously done stuff to me or a couple of my people to make us be after them, innit? Be honest, you must be a bit, like, fearful sometimes when you're out. No, nah, it's not even fearful. Obviously, it's paranoia, innit? Thinking, who's there? Who's that in that car over there? Who's that? Obviously, it's just watching what's going on. I've chosen this lifestyle for the money. Right. I've chosen to do it. As it was hard for us to get a good opportunity in life to be someone good, to be someone successful, it came to us easy. We started this game and it was like it was like a game to us. We started it, you had loads of money coming in, nice cars, nice clothes, nice skills. You could do whatever you want. You don't ever need to worry. Even though we're out there 24-7, that was our way to make a living. And a living, obviously there's ups and downs to living. You could get shot any second, you get stabbed at any second. Because these roads, it's not a safe road, it's cold. I still carry that. You still carry that? Yeah. Why, why is that, though? What are you protecting yourself from? I've got a lot of haters and stuff, people that want to kill me. And it's for my protection, to be honest. Yeah. The road sounds mad right now. It's not that, yeah. If you've got a knife on the street, yeah, and you get into a beef with someone, yeah, you ain't gonna have a fist fight nowadays. It's 2018. It's 2018, bro. <laughs> yeah? They're gonna pull out a weapon, so are you. Yeah? You know what I'm saying? It's an eye for an eye, yeah? They don't do no fist fighting. So. I can see a guy over there, and because I don't like him, I can go and stab him. It's not, we won't even actually put it as a gang, it's a family. It's not a gang, it's a family. We're all groups of boys. We all grew up on the same estate. We mostly all went to school together. If, if one of his gang members did something to one of my gang members, all of his side of his gang, I'll be after all of you lot, and all of my gang will be after you lot. Because yeah. you lot disrespected one of my family members. Do you think that the main reason as to why they're getting into this road life and they're getting involved in all of this crime is because their background isn't the best? Some people come from a good background. Some people choose it. Some, some people, people have to. Some it. people have to some do it. Some people don't have a choice. You know what I'm mm. like, obviously, I know, I know a couple of youth. They come from, they come from a good background and that. And obviously. They said, yeah, oh, they like the lifestyle, because they know a couple of mates who's done it. They said, yeah, let me join in. They want to do it. I can know kids who's come from Chelsea, everywhere. Good, nice mum, good, nice dad, but they've chose to. Some of us have to do it. Some of us comes from estates, from ghetto places, and all you see around when you walk out your house is you standing on a street corner se selling drugs, smoking drugs, and so then you look at them thinking, yeah, I think I want to be like them one day. Do you think this life is worth putting your mum through that? Do you know what, yeah. She only worries if she actually knows that you're in trouble. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you don't chat to your mum and that like that because you don't want to worry her anyway. Yeah, but you make sure every day you always ring or go home to your parents. You yeah. know what I'm saying? A lot of people think gang violence is fueled by the drug war, but after speaking with the Woolwich boys, I've discovered it's actually more than that. A lot of these murders have been happening simply because someone has been disrespected, usually on social media. The way that young people feel validated through likes, through views, you know, and it's because they have a lack of self-worth. These young people are looking at it as a game. Uh, I know that there are scoreboards. If you kill certain people in a certain way, then you get a number of points and you have a leaderboard. 
Do the gangs even know what this war is about? These gangs don't know what it's about. It's all about status. It's all about territory, but it's territory for things that they don't even own. They don't own any property. They don't own any streets. They're just doing things because they think they have got to protect their area. It doesn't make any sense. There's no evidence this gang war is going to end anytime soon. And the people affected the most are desperate for a solution. I believe that it's a community problem and the community has to solve it itself. You know, these people, you know, in the Houses of Parliament, these politicians, they don't understand because they're not from here. They don't live it. They don't see it. Even the gangs themselves don't see how it will end. We're still young, we still got opportunity. But it's about the opportunity being there for us. I always wake up thinking, well, oh, you don't know what could happen today, that I step out, I could have to do something to someone else or someone could have to do something to me. It's the only life you know, you have to just keep doing it. There's nothing else to do, in it? The only thing for certain is that if someone makes that decision to join a gang, it's going to be very difficult to go back.